Hey everybody and welcome back to Moto with Ellery and in this episode we're going to be um, working on the age-old problem of all computer designers, animators, um, anybody who's worked in any kind of digital design and that's how to properly plug in a USB plug um, into a port. Uh, because if you're like me, you plug it in and it's facing the right way, but doesn't seem to go. So you flip it over and you plug it in and that really was the wrong way. So you flip it back and magically it works after that. So we're going to do that in Moto, uh, except we're going to figure out how to do it so that uh, it will go in the right way. And no matter how our uh, USB port moves around, yes, we're going to have a flying USB port. Um, we'll be able to plug in easily and directly using constraints. But we're also going to build in a modular system so that we can control this and we can either change ports, we can change the animation curve or whatever on our master item, in this case, the port, and still get everything to plug in naturally, directly, and cleanly. Um, now, this I'm using a, a simple example of a USB port. You could obviously do this with just about anything else where you'd want one thing to uh, go to another. So uh, spaceships landing, a helicopter, uh, jet landing on, a, on an aircraft carrier. Whatever the case may be, you can apply the same kind of a thing and it will allow you to uh, get good control um, and have something that you can uh, swap out your uh, your target and still have it work nicely. Um, now, you could also do uh, some other things that might work for this. Dynamic parenting might work. Um, setting up uh, an animating um, you know, secondary and tertiary transforms could work. Uh, the way that I'm setting this up is going to be using multiple locators. And by nesting locators, this is going to give us... Um, some real nice ways that we can um, add in additional functionality later on without messing up what we've got. All right, so we've got our USB port right here, and here is our plug. There you go. So if we hide the port and see the plug, you can see they actually have uh, the properly aligning pieces. So if we turn these both on and we look at the side view, you can see that our plug has the plastic down here on the bottom and the uh, port has the plastic on the top. Uh, we've got the metal shroud on the inside of the port so that it will uh, meet up with the plug and everything. Ideally, knock on wood, should go just right. All right, so we're going to start by hiding the plug. And just to make this, uh, you know, something that's actually going to... Um, you know, actually matter, we're going to set up a little bit of an animation on our port so that, you know, we've got a moving target that we're trying to hit with the plug. Okay, so let's hop over here to the setup tab. Actually, let's go to the animate tab. Change my mind. Um, and I've got an extra window right here, which I'm going to delete because we don't need that at the moment. And then I'm going to switch over to a perspective view. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab this guy here and I'm going to keyframe. I want to change position in X, Y, and Z and rotation in X, Y, and Z. Um, all right, so now uh, we can take and keyframe this. So I'm going to set it at frame zero. I'm going to set it there um, at frame 120. Let's uh, drag it back and up and over. And then let's orient it. Oops, let's set our action center back to automatic. There we go. Let's hop back over to animate. Um, and so let's go ahead and orient this kind of like that. It was really off kilter, right? Uh, so what's going to happen is it's going to animate from here to there. That's not enough though. So here, let's take this. And at this point, we're going to uh, bring it down and let's face it out maybe that way. And then just to give it a little bit nicer animation curve, it's going to kind of up and arc around. Uh, so now we're looking at something like that. There we go. Okay, so now this is going to be, you know, if you're trying to plug your USB um, device into something like this and you just want to get your uh, wireless mouse to work, you got to plug in your dongle, you know, this is going to be a moving target that would be hard to hit. Um, now we're going to set this up here. Let's go back to frame zero so that, uh, so that we can get this to work every time. And as you'll see, we'll also be able to change this out uh, so that we can uh, work with it in other circumstances as well. So let's go ahead and hide our curves for right now. And what I'm going to do here is, uh, actually, we're going to go over to the Setup tab here because we're going to need to add some more stuff. So let's go ahead and delete this extra view. You may want it later, but uh, I'm going to delete it for right now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a locator right here at the origin, OK? So it's right there. Um, by the way, both the plug and the port are centered at the origin. 
So um, so the origin is at the center of space here at frame uh, zero. So even though the models are slightly off center, um, the center of space is where the plug and the port are. So just a side note, uh, you may need to adjust that if you're gonna do this on your own. Uh, but in this case, it's right there in the center. And we want to change the way this locator looks because this is kind of getting in the way and becoming cumbersome. So let's go to locator and shape. We're going to change from default to custom, and that's not quite what we want. Uh, I'm going to replace this with a rhombus instead, and uh, it can be one that's significantly smaller. So let's change this down to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Uh, there we go. This is actually a little bit big for a USB port, but that's all right. We get the idea. Um, Okay, so there we go. Um, that's actually still probably a little bit big, so let's change 0.05, there we go. And it's a little smaller. So really, we just wanna know where this is so that we can plug this in, right? Um, okay, so now if uh, if we take and we kind of scrub the timeline, we can see, yeah, the, the box is going away, the, uh, the plug is going away, and what we wanna do is we'll want this, uh, this locator to chase down the, uh, the actual you know, the actual plug here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back here to zero and um, I'm gonna select my constraint. And now just as a second note, I could make another, um, I could make another locator and parent the port to the locator, just as a side note, so that uh, so that I, I, could, I could be uh, putting the constraints from this locator to another locator instead of this locator to this mesh item. I'm just going to do it straight to the mesh item um, because that's direct enough for uh, what I'm working on now. But just so you know, adding in this locator here and adding it into into where you're going to plug in is also another option that you have, uh, which is good if you want to make things move around a little bit. In this case, I don't want the, uh, the, the plug or the port to move relative to anything else. I just want the plug to be able to move relative to the port so that I can get a straight, uh, clean plug-in. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to select the locator, shift-click on the port, and we're going to put on two constraints. We're going to put in a position constraint, Okay, and then we're going to shift click on the uh, on the port again, and then we're going to put a rotation constraint. And since we're on frame zero, they're both centered up, nothing's happening. But as we click and drag this, we'll see that this is now following the um, the port. Now I know what you're thinking, big deal. Why didn't you just parent it to it? Why didn't you just um, drag it in as a child of the port and call it a deal? Now the reason I didn't do that is because I want to have some control over how this lines up. You know, I want this to start off. Um, you know, maybe back here, and then I want it to catch up, um, but I want that to happen over time. And the benefit that you get when you're actually working with constraints as opposed to direct parenting is that you can add output options. So we're gonna add output options for both the, uh, the position and the rotation. And what those output options are, if we click and open these up one row further, it creates a matrix channel effect that lets you um, keyframe or just fade in and fade out uh, the, the power of the constraint on any X, Y, or Z axis, okay? So we're gonna take this, and what I'm gonna do is I want it to start unplugged. So let's say um, I'm gonna set here at frame 40, I'm gonna set these all to zero. Okay, so you can see position-wise, this has moved back there. Oops, got a zero all amount, there we go. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the opacity on the rotation. So zero, 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 okay. So now nothing happens to it, which is great. That's exactly what I want right now. Um, and this also will, just as a side note, this will give us the ability to take and let's say I'm gonna move this back. Um, and now this is gonna move separate from the, uh, from the actual, um, you know, the actual port and it's gonna move separate from the constraints. Once your matrix channel effects get up to zero or up to 100% rather, um, you won't be able to adjust this and manipulate this this way. So just a thing to note. But if I put this back here um, and we're at 0%, I can actually move this around totally freely. Now what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna go down and let's say I wanna give it, let's go from uh, 40 to 80. I'm going to have it fade back in. So let's take our matrix channel effects and set these up to 100 in X, Y, and Z, same thing with rotation. Let's get this where we make sure we can see it. Uh, we'll go back up to 100. And you could offset these. You could have it aligned first with the X and then with the Y and then with the Z. You can um, you can offset these all you want. And uh, you know, it helps if you have them animated. So let's go ahead and click the animation on for all of these. And then we'll go back to frame 40 and I'll zero them out because I neglected to um, turn on the keyframe before I did that. So let's, now we'll go back to zero, zero, zero. 
and we have this all set up. So now between frame 40 and frame 80, that's going to go plug in. Okay. Great. So now let's take this another step farther and we're going to, let's just close up the locator for right now. We're going to take the plug, which we'll make visible, and I'm going to make it a child of the locator. Um, and since I had translated this back, this uh, this plug is staying the same place because I didn't have um, my compensation turned on. So all I have to do though is zero out my Z and it's going to put it right in the center there. Okay. So now what's going to happen is between frame 40 and frame 80, this is going to go and plug in, but there we hit a problem. All right, you can see that before this plugs in, this looks really bad because it's not plugging directly in, okay? Now, you could go and line up uh, and, and get some of, your, um, some of your matrix channel effects to, uh, to align so that you get this um, more aligned in X, Y, or Z first and then plug in, uh, but that's going to give you some problems if you need to swap this out later. Um, alternately, with the uh, channel... or channel constraints for position and rotation you could use offsets so see I could use this offset here and I can move this so I could take this and painstakingly align it and that would work in this case you know if I sit here and I really adjust this um, it's going to work but the problem that ends up is if I need to make even a subtle change uh, to my parent item I'm going to have to readjust all of these settings again. I'm going to have to re readjust the offsets uh, for the position and orientation. So that's not going to give me the freedom and flexibility that I really want here. Now, what I'm going to do instead is since I used a locator here, um, my position now uh, can work so that I offset the plug relative to the locator and then it just plugs in and we're pretty much set and ready to go. So let's say I do want it to be all the way plugged in by 80. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I'm going to line it up by frame 70. So let's go up here and go to my uh, matrix channel effects. And we're going to hop over to the animate tab here so that I can go and grab um, my, there we go. So there's my opacity X, Y, and Z. You can see those. Um, I'm just going to drag those back to frame 70. So now it's all um, in position lined up by frame 70 and then I'm going to do the same thing for the other one here so this is orientation the rotation and drag this back to frame 70 all right and now you can see all that's happening is it's just plugging in a few frames earlier we still have the issue though where it's not plugging in correctly so this is where we can just take and offset our actual item now if we wanted we could make another layer here where we have another locator inside of here and then the plug on that so we could have a little bit more freedom i'm not going to worry about that at the moment uh, but what i am going to do is i'm going to take this piece here okay this is the plug now this is the actual mesh item and let's hop back over to setup tab here and because i find it a little easier to work in here for some reason uh and i'm going to change my axes to local orientation so you can see they're aligning with the uh with the plug and with the um also with the locator okay and then i'm going to keyframe position and really all i need to worry about is position z now, you may have to worry about other stuff depending on the animation, but uh, I, all I need is to worry about is Z here. And what I'm going to do is by frame 70, or just pretty much throughout the whole animation, I'm going to have this sitting just behind the locator. So this is going to be the equivalent of taking your USB plug and lining it up to the port before you plug it in. So now we can see, if we, let's zoom out a little bit here, we can see that the plug moves up towards the port, it aligns, okay, and then over the next 10 frames, let's go ahead and zero out our Z and it plugs right in. So now we can see here over these last 10 frames, it just goes straight in to the plug. All right, and this is going to align directly since it's uh, since it's actually following the locator, which is already aligned now uh, because our channel effects are at 100%. It's completely aligned with the port. Now this is just gonna line right up and plug in. And it doesn't matter that the orientation of the, um, of the actual port is changing, it uh, doesn't matter because we're going relative to the, uh, the, the locator that's there. All right, and then as it continues to move towards the last few frames of the animation, it's just going to follow along and align perfectly. All right, awesome. There's a problem though. So if I hop over to my shader tree, I a lot of times like to work with, a, with an extra base material up top so that I can see everything cleanly. All right, uh -huh, so let's hop over to the render tab here and... Let's get a nice frame here where we can see what's going on. So there's our plug. It's about to plug in. Let's go ahead and 
hit the preview render. So awesome. Uh, let's turn off our base material. And lo and behold, I'm plugging in a USB 3 plug into a USB 2 port, which is okay. It's backwards compatible. But, you know, this is a 128 gig micro uber fast flash drive, and I want to get the USB 3 speed. So darn it, what am I going to do? Oh, yeah, I've got another port up here. Uh, and if we look at that port, fortunately, our uh, our motherboard manufacturer decided to put a USB 3 port up there too. So we're set, but the only problem is, is even though we have a USB 3 port, that's not what we're plugging into. All right, so now we need to take this and switch it so that we're actually plugging into here. Now, right now, the port 2 is a child of a uh, of of the main port so it's going to follow the same animation path uh, but it's offset so and really all that's happened here if you look this has a 300 millimeter y offset so it's sitting up above but it's still centered the same way that the lower one is now this also works so if you have these going in two totally different directions so if this one was arcing off to the left and the usb3 plug was arcing off to the right it, this would still work but for right now it's just set up there and i want it to um, i want it to plug into the usb3 port Great, so how do I do this without going and setting that up all again? Let's have a look. I'm gonna hop over here to the schematic view and actually here, let's go over to the setup tab because we get a bigger schematic view. Uh, so let's pull this up here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my items list and I'm gonna take my constraints here and oops, I ended up getting my material too. Let's make sure we have that deselected before I drag this in. There we go, so I've got my position constraint and I'm gonna do the same thing with my rotation constraint. And let's, so we've got the constraint, and then we've got the uh, matrix channel effect, which is how we're fading in and fading out. Uh, and then if you haven't done much work in the schematic view, um, whenever you see a non-black and gray um, node input, that means that it's uh, it has another input or an output. So if you double click on it, it will show that. So there you go, you can see this is port. In the port world position, and world rotation are plugging into the constraint. The constraint plugs into uh, the matrix channel effect, which plugs into the hip bone, and no, that's something else. Uh, but it plugs into the locator, and that's where we end up having our finished bit. So we've got world position taking a little bit of a roundabout path into the world position here. Since those are, uh, are set up in this way, though, it's really easy to swap this out as long as you pull these nodes in here. So really, all I need to do is go up here to port two, and I don't have a uh, world position or rotation here. I've got to hop over to channels. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to port two, make sure I see that here. And I'm going to go down and find world position and world rotation. And then I'm just going to drag those out in here. So now I've got world position, world rotation. And all I'm going to do is deselect those or disconnect them. And I'm going to put world position into there, world rotation into there. And now lo and behold, we're plugging into the USB 3 port. So this works great with a bunch of different uh, applications. Like I said, you could imagine fighter jets landing on an aircraft carrier, or I was really tempted to do sci-fi ships landing in a launch bay and then having a secondary launch bay where some of the ships split off into there. Um, but I do a lot of sci-fi stuff, so I decided to do something a little bit more concrete. Uh, if you'd like to see animating a sci-fi ship and having it land in a launch bay using this kind of a technique, let me know. I'd be more than happy to set it up. Uh, but there you go. That's really all there is to it. So if you're not afraid to um, to dig a little deeper into your settings, so in this case it's by um, adding our output options to our uh, constraints. And if you're um, also willing to hop into your node editor a little bit, not even much, just a little bit here, all we were doing is dragging in work that we already did uh, with regular constraint setups and then put a few extra channels in. Uh, you can map and remap this as much as you want, and it's always going to line up and it's always going to work. So even though we've changed now to a separate port, it still lines up, plugs in, and now we've got USB 3 speeds. We don't have to worry about um, schlepping it with USB 2. Uh, we're set and we're ready to go. I hope this is helpful. Um, if you like this video and videos like it, please check out my Patreon account. That's patreon.com slash Ellery. Um, if you'd like to get the, uh, the content to this episode and the downloadable video to this episode or, um, or any other episode of Moto with Ellery, you can check those out on Gumroad and buy them a la carte, gumroad.com slash Ellery. By the way, if you subscribe on Patreon, you'll also get downloadable files and also the you can get downloadable videos if you want um, either way just depends on how you'd like to uh, help and support that does it for today go make something cool and i'll see you next time